Greetings, unsettled souls, <clears throat> and welcome to the correct views. Sam I B. DeGangi doing political commentary for the media speaks. <laughs> and like everyone, I'm going to go ahead and join me with me today. Don't forget, you can hit subscribe, you can hit share, and you can now find the show on Twitter. When you do all of those things, it is an amazing help uh, towards me. And friends, I'm going to go ahead and zip right into the news that we do have for today, what we're going over, and what you need to know specifically regarding the new WikiLeaks here. This is from Politico. Um, Long-time listeners know that I'm not a particularly huge fan of... Oops, let me fix that. <laughs> not a huge fan of Politico. <clears throat> they're clearly... <clears throat> they'll clearly do anything to push forward a socialist agenda. I don't find them to be um, fair-minded at all. But I think we have a decent take on this. So I'm going to share it with you and I'll let you know what you think. This is Corey Bennett. WikiLeaks pushes leaked DNC voicemails. Freshly unearthed voicemails and documents from the Trove of Leaked Democratic National Committee in the emails have revealed more embarrassing details about Democratic donors and party members. Several messages were from unidentified voters upset by the influence of Senator Bernie Sanders on the Democratic Party. I'm furious for what they are doing for Bernie Sanders, said one caller. I'm getting way too much, he's getting way too much influence. ABC News also uncovered several new, t- new details about what donors had to raise to get access to VP events. So let's pause for a second here and analyze. This is the kind of cheating that you see before countries have a complete and total collapse in terms of the voting power and the structure of the average person. This is also the kind of thing you see in countries that have completely lost their way in terms of knowing what is even allowed within their own constitution. The shirtless president, O'Malley, um, the shirtless president, he didn't get a say, he didn't get a voice. Will, the only person that made any sense at all, Willis, I think his name was, one, he was in one debate and he was gone. Sanders got some attention, and the big money, the big money didn't like him. So you Bernie supporters, your voice and your saying meant nothing at all. So the next time you think, oh, it's time that we unify as a party, it's time that we get together. Let me tell you what, no matter what you may or may not like about Donald Trump, and you could argue that there uh, there's ample room for both, one thing that you cannot say is that Donald Trump cheated his way into succeeding. And that looks to be exactly what we're seeing here regarding um, Mrs. Clinton. The servicing of the files just hours before President Barack Obama was set to speak at the Democratic National Convention is sure to raise more questions about leakers' intent to disrupt Hillary Clinton's campaign during the party's um, campaign convention. Let me tell you why. Because people know, they just instinctively know Clinton is bad news. They don't want, no, nobody that knows anything about politics at all wants her anywhere near the White House. They wouldn't want her in the White House to clean up the excrement falling from the dog. Anybody at all, are you excited about Hillary Clinton? No, of course not. Nobody is. So, there's more blatant cheating to be found. Uh, Cybersecurity experts and intelligence officers believe Russia is behind the digital assault. Yeah, of course. It's Russia. It's Vladimir Putin. It's, It's plain and simple, friends. Whether or not Vladimir Putin did it or not doesn't really matter very much. What matters is whether or not the cheating occurred. What matters is whether or not she was pushed ahead and pushed forward. It doesn't matter who exposed it. I hate to be the one to tell you that, but what matters is that we figure out how and why Bernie Sanders was silenced. Unless, of course, you don't care about anything except the, uh, the fact that there's a D by Clinton. This is from the Washington Times. FBI exoneration of Hillary Clinton raises a disturbing question. That's what if the the fix was in. Um, I was going to skip this because it was dated the 20th, but now I'm not going to, and I'll tell you why. This ties in quite quite nicely with the story that we just covered, because 
it's uh, listen to this. This is from the uh, Andrew Napolitano, who should be president. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but I'm going to uh, pause it. I'll leave it up here on the screen for you to see it. And I'm going to read. He, he writes them as questions, but the point is these are all facts that can be proven of what the links are for. Um, the, this, the questions are rhetorical. I'm just going to pick out a few here. What if the folks who run the Democratic, the Depart excuse me, the Department of Political Justice recently were told that the Republic would suffer if Hillary Clinton were indicted for espionage because Donald Trump might succeed Barack Obama in the presidency? Do you understand that? That is the political justice, the Department of Justice getting involved in what you can vote, what your say can be, how your say can be said, and who you have to vote for, like a good North Korean. Does that make you happy? Because these things are going on. I wasn't a big Bernie fan. I really wasn't. But I'll tell you one thing. I don't want to see him cheated. I don't want uh, uh, my president to have cheated their way into office. What if espionage is a the failure to safeguard state secrets and the evidence that Mrs. Clinton failed to safeguard them is unambiguous and overwhelming? What if the means of fighting the secret war consisted of employing intelligence assets rather than the U.S. military? What if Mrs. Clinton concocted the idea because the use of military requires public reporting in the entire Congress, but the use of intelligence asset requires only secret reporting to a dozen or so members of Congress? That's a long, wordy sentence that is saying, what if she got around having to start the war, which she thought would be beneficial to her political career. What if she, instead of that, she simply handled it in such a way that they could go around Congress? Um, what if when Mrs. Clinton suggested to the President that the United States wage a secret, undeclared war against Libya, the President went along with it as a no-lose of opposition? What if he assumed that if the secret war succeeded, he'd get the credit, and if the secret war failed, then she'd get the blame? In other words, nobody ever cared about the legality or the process of law here, or whether or not the war was justified. It was just a bunch of political maneuvering that had the names of your dead sons and daughters on it. Um, what if Mrs. Clinton expanded her war by permitting American and foreign arms dealers to bypass the NATO arms embargo on Libya? by selling heavy-duty military-grade arms directly to militias in Libya. Are you understanding what all of this means here? These aren't just questions that are asked for no reason at all. These are facts. What if after the ascendancy of Donald Trump in the Republican presidential primaries, the president warmed up to his former rival? What if Mr. Trump so got under the president's skin that it drove him to embrace Mrs. Clinton as his chosen successor? And as one Democrat could prevent a Trump uh, presidency. Very interesting, friends. This is bad. This is very bad. A lot of this could be used depending on what was hacked. Here's another problem with the uh, the hacked emails, uh, particularly if Russia got a hold of them. Let's say that everything that you're hearing about Russia is true. We heard today the Democratic National Convention sure attacked you, didn't they? Okay. So look, let's play. Let's say, okay, Vladimir Putin has secrets on Clinton that could be politically damaging, perhaps on the world stage. He could use that as leverage over her quite easily, and he's even give it to other leaders to do the same. And this could be used as a detriment. This could cause her to have favoritism towards agreements, which may not be in you and I's best interest or the country's best interest and done simply for the good of her political career. And if you somehow don't think that she would do that, let me tell you something. You haven't been paying attention to the show because we've just gone over the kinds of things that they can and will and are doing. Friends, uh, moving on here, I wanted to get to it ever so quickly. It is brought to you by Sticker Junkie, and if you have not been to Sticker Junkie, then you are missing out greatly. What you do is you go to this site and on checkout type in correct views or the correct views. Not only are you going to get a discount in stickers that look this good, but you're going to get another discount because you're a listener of the show. So make sure you go stickerjunkie.com. This is from bedroom uh, boredomtherapy.com. Uh, and I think it's our first time on the show. 
So I guess it's a welcome in order to... He finds this box, see, hidden in a trap door in his closet. What's locked inside? Unbelievable. Everyone dreams about finding a hidden room or a secret passage in their home, yet as much as you search for every square inch of every room, you never find anything more than a loose board and a few spare shelving brackets. This man, uh, however, found something in his new house that he never could have predicted. After moving in some boxes, he found something embedded in the floor that he had noticed before. And little did he know what he was about to uncover. Now, I'm just going to scroll this down here, but basically... He found old, old, old coins. Um, it looks like, I do believe, um, you can see the door. Some of this stuff is uh, borderline priceless. Look at this. Just mind-blowing, the kind of luck that some people have. Bam! A real-life treasure chest. All of those coins contained, including uh, dollars and British pounds. Some of the coins dated back to over a century ago. This one's 1885 there that you're looking at on screen share here. Just astounding. An old silver surfer card. Um, I guess it was also a uh, something from uh, the, the Girl Scouts or something. But truly amazing. Old, old find here. I thought that was an interesting story, and if you didn't, then there's something wrong with you. You're no fun. It was some Christel, and here is what you're waiting for, then. <laughs> the Dumby, Dumby, Dumby of the day. Dumby of the day, of course, brought to you by the Seacrest Motel. If you're smart, you're going to go to the Seacrest Motel, and when you do, you're going to let, uh, much like you did with, uh, Sticker junk. You're gonna let them know you heard about it on the correct news, and you're gonna get a savings. Finland man thrown in prison for using excessive self-defense against home invaders. I'm gonna see how many people on a philosophical level can stay with me here for just a moment. Beyond the fact that you were born with a God-given right to have a gun, let's go on a more philosophical side of this question. Let's analyze it somewhat differently. Let's say that the more you pacify a nation, and the more you bring people up like Black Lives Matter, who are oftentimes burning down their own city and then claiming to be victims, the more you disarm the populace and teach them to blame the victim and make uh, innocence out of the uh, true criminals, then what you're going to find is a society that slowly but surely loses the will, the courage, the determination, and the, uh, the basic instinct of survival. This is one such story. One man armed only with a knife fought off three robbers with a gun. You'll see why it's getting the dumb day of the day here in a minute. Leftists in Finland have thrown a man in jail for using excessive self-defense. Fight off a home invasion. Let me go back to screen share because you're not going to believe me if I don't. A homeowner in Finland has been sentenced to four years in jail and a hefty fine four freaking years. After fighting out three intruders who attempted to rob his house, the thieves, it says, meanwhile, got lesser prison terms and are to be paid damages by their victim. This is what happens when excessive liberalism, excessive leftism, it completely rots the mind like a cancer. In April, the 35-year-old man from Halivinka in a town in 500 kilometers north of the Finnish capital, Helsinki, heard a knock on the front door of his suburban house, it says, and he rushed to open it. As soon as he unlocked it, three strangers rushed in and launched at him, toting baseball bats and a gun. The man retreated to the kitchen where he found a knife and was able to overpower the intruders, two men and one woman. So one man, armed only with a knife, fought off three robbers with a gun. And rather than get the Medal of Honor, it says he is gunning a jail sentence. The court, if you could even call it that, 
spent nearly four months examining the case to come up with an unexpected ruling. The homeowner has been convicted of excessive self-defense and attempted manslaughter. If you break into my house, I'm probably going to try to kill you. Uh, I, I, you know what? That's what happens when you threaten someone's house and their family. You know if you're some rapist or what you are. He will serve an unconditional sentence for four years and two months, which he has to spend in prison. The man also has to pay damages to his attackers. With a fine totaling, would be in the U.S. $23,000. The newspapers doesn't provide any information on the injuries of the attackers. The attackers were also convicted of felony home invasion and assault, yet their punishments are much less harsh. All three of these bastards received one year and two month conditional sentences, which is similar to probation or house arrest in Finland, depending on the case. The offender serves the sentence outside the jail and has to follow strict jail-like rules. Perhaps the judge could have given the robbers the man's home as well, the author of the story writes. After all, they're clearly the real victims. In all seriousness, this is why in the U.S. people say if you're getting robbed that you should shoot to kill. Friends, I can't even believe that that story is even true. And if I could afford to send dunce caps to other countries, I certainly would do so there. As you look at the Seacrest Motel, proud sponsor of the show, let them know you heard about us when you stay there near Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio. Friends, that's the show. How do you like it? Give me a favor. You can become a supporter of mine, a patron, it's, uh, to donate to the show. It's in the description. All the money you give to, to me goes towards a better show. The studio's being redone, so I'm going to be down here for a moment. Um, also, I want to point out that you can donate directly at the correct view at hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show, and I promise you the commentary and the facts that you have come to expect from me on a regular basis. Help me keep doing it, friends. Good night. God bless.